Hello everyone, welcome back to the third round of the Isle of Man International Chess Tournament. The game that I'm going to show you today is played between American prodigy Grandmaster Jeffrey Shong and Indian Grandmaster Vishnu Prasanna. So without further ado, let's dive into the game. Jeffrey with the white pieces and Vishnu with black. So Jeffrey opens with e4, we have the Sicilian defense, knight f3, e6, d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, and knight c6. So Vishnu goes for the time enough variation. Knight c3, black goes a6, we have knight takes c6, b takes c6, white develops, bishop d3, and black strikes in the center with d5. And here Jeffrey castles, so white keeps uh, the tension in the center as he is the only one that can dictate when the pawns will be taken. Queen c7 from Vishnu, so black never wants to take uh, this pawn because this would only mess up his structure. So here Jeffrey plays rook to e1, we have bishop b7 and e5 from Xiong gaining more space and taking away these squares from black's pieces. Oftentimes having a piece, uh, having a pawn on e5 can give you good attacking chances on the king's side, especially since black can never put a knight on f6. Black goes c5, so if white were to develop calmly with let's say bishop to f4, then c4 kicks this bishop of the very nice um, b1 h7 diagonal. So after bishop f1, knight e7, um, with the knight coming to g6 and also this bishop coming to b4, black is at least equal here. So after c5, that is why Jeffrey played b3. We have knight to e7 and knight to a4. So what's the idea behind this move? Well, the knight on c3 looks a bit loose. If black can ever get in c4 and somehow bishop to b4, then white's position becomes a bit unpleasant. Also, with the knight on a4, if black ever pushes d4 to open up his light square bishop, white can go knight to b2 and try to occupy this nice square on c4. So after knight a4, black goes knight to c6, attacking this pawn, and we have bishop to f4 defending, and h5 from Vishnu. With this move, black is signaling that he is not going to castle kingside. And Jeffrey plays c3, just controlling this square and also not allowing knight to b4. Bishop e7 from black, queen e2, and then king to f8. So for the moment, black's king is safe, but the position with uh, the problem with his position is that these rooks are not connected. Jeffrey plays rook a to c1. So if black ever tries to break with d4, then this rook will be optimally placed on the open c file. h4 from Vishnu. h3 just stopping any h3 from black. And black goes g6, which unnecessarily weakens the dark squares around black's king. And also, this gives the light square bishop on d3 a target on g6. Instead, here rook to d8 would have been okay for black. But anyway, in the game, g6 from Vishnu. And white can try to take advantage of this. One of the ideas is to play queen to g4. Just trying to sacrifice on g6. But Jeffrey plays queen to e3 here which is also very sensible. Just trying to trade off the dark square bishop and play against black's dark square weaknesses. So we have knight to b8, trying to reroute to d7. Bishop g5, bishop takes g5, queen takes g5, knight to d7 and b4. So with this move, white is trying to open up the b file for his rook. Rook to h5. This is a mistake from black because after queen to f4, white now threatens bishop takes g6 because this pawn is pinned, 
and black cannot close the position with c4. So here black goes rook takes e5, Jeffrey gives a check, king e7, we have knight takes c5, knight takes c5, b takes c5, and now this b file is open for white, and his initiative is starting to grow. So here g5, just holding on to this pawn, queen g7, looks at this rook, and also this pawn in g5, Vishnu goes rook takes e1, we have rook takes e1, and queen to f4 from Vishnu, defending g5. And here rook to b1 from white, just attacking this bishop. And, well, black is just hanging on for dear life in this position. He goes bishop c6, rook to b6, attacking the bishop again. Here, rook to c8 would probably have offered more resistance. But uh, we have king to d7 from Vishnu. And now Jeffrey finishes off the attack quite nicely. First he plays rook to b4, just kicking this queen away from controlling the e5 square. Queen c1 check, king h2, king to e7, defending the f7 pawn. And here queen to e5, and you can see the dark squares around black's king just look incredibly weak. White is simply threatening to play queen d6, winning this bishop here. Therefore, bishop to b5, but here a4 from Jeffrey. Black doesn't have the time to take the bishop here because he simply gets mated. So after a4, Vishnu drops the bishop back, bishop d7, and Jeffrey plays rook to b7, and it was in this position that Vishnu Prasanna resigned the game. White has so many threats here. Queen to d6, c6. This is just a hopeless position for black. So a wonderful game from Jeffrey Shong. That puts him on 3 out of 3. Let me just pull out the standings real quick so you can get an idea of uh, the players that are leading the tournament. So after 3 rounds, there are 6 players on 3 out of 3. They are MVL, Wang Hao, Arkady Naidic, Jeffrey Xiong himself, Erwin Lamy, and Tregubov from Russia. So Aronian drew his game against Samuel Shanklin. That puts him on 2.5. So I hope you enjoyed the game. Feel free to subscribe, to share, and to leave a like on this video. Thank you for watching, and have a great day.